Welcome back. Our guest is Syracuse Mayor Stephanie Minor. The topic is I-81. If you have to commute home from downtown, you know what a headache it's been. Or if you have to come to work north of downtown, you know what the headache has been. And so we're trying to figure out when this building is going to be, when, is, when the situation is going to be resolved, when the building is going to come down. The good news is that you did, you wrote a letter to the DOT and what happened? Uh, I wrote a letter and told them that the there was construction that was supposed to be starting on the Erie Boulevard bridge that went over West Street and I asked them to delay the start of that construction because I felt if they didn't delay it, it would just exacerbate a problem. Um, and, and I think it's you, you look at what's happening. Of course, the Butternut Street bridge is out. There was a year of two bridges being out over 81. It might not be so bad if the Butternut Street bridge wasn't out because at least you could get over there and then get going. But yeah. It, it, it certainly makes it a, a lot more difficult. Well, Anthony Tartaro, who said he would like to come here today, uh, is on the property. Now, we'll talk about what his staying on the property means and what his concerns are, but here's what he had to say. My concern, after witnessing all these people that are, that are absolute nuts coming by here, going, tear it down, eh, 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 is uh, to, to make that easier for you. I've can, uh, my cooperation with the D DEC has been to that end. Uh, any cooperation that may come here to s today with the governor and the DOT is uh, is to that end. I just have to protect my daughter's future while doing it and protect the building while doing it. Yep. And what we're working for is uh, what I what I like to see is a barrier. And I don't have any problem with someone coming on the property in order to put a barrier up there so you can use the highway. Mm -hmm. My concern is that it may be misconstrued. Like they're talking about eminent domain here. I don't believe they have a right of eminent domain here. But I would voluntarily do it. I just want something that says that what you're doing here today will only be applied to putting up that barrier and that later on you can't use that to say to tear this building down. Uh, I don't see uh, why it's taking this long and I'm, I'm, I wish you wouldn't blame me for it. Okay, Mayor. Does he have a point here? No, I don't think so. Look, uh, if... If we could put, or if the state could put a barrier there, or a netting, or fencing, or do something cheaper than uh, demolishing the building, then it would have been done. And part of all of this, you know, you, the quote delay has been for the state to go in there and working with engineers that we're paying for to figure out what's the most efficient way to remove the hazard that is to 81. You can't put a barrier down there. You can't put fencing. I don't think that you can shore up the building. All of those things are, have been told to us by the engineers. But believe me, if there were a cheaper, faster way to do it than d demolishing the entire building, we, we'd be doing that. Well, he said that he's he, he thought perhaps taking up, taking down the top two floors as a, a solution. He also suggested, as you uh, indicated, maybe some sort of stitching, temporary barrier or something that would protect the highway but would then allow for more time for the building. Is, is, is that not realistic here? Well, we've had engineers looking at that. We've paid engineers thousands and thousands of dollars to come up with that. Each of those alternatives, it's my understanding, have been explored and we've come back and been told that they are not safe to do that. They will not alleviate uh, the hazard that is to 81. Now, or could DOT come back again and say that they figured out another way to do it? Perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but time in and time again, we found that all of these engineers that we have consulted and paid for have come back and said the only way that you can remove the hazard to 81 is to demolish that building. But you know, the perception is that, okay, this is a highway, this is a, a city issue, and that the mayor of the city should be able to get this done no matter what. Sure. And you know, the, the most popular thing for me to do would be to go over there and sit in a crane and have a, uh, you know, knock the building down and open up 81 in a big flourish. But I didn't close 81. I can't open it as mayor of the city of Syracuse. And as mayor of the city of Syracuse, in, in your piece earlier, you heard a woman say, you know what, I don't care what it costs, just knock it down and get it over with. I don't have that luxury. Maybe at a time 10 years ago, the city of Syracuse could do that. We have a $35 million budget deficit, and I don't have a million dollars or $500,000 to if, knock that building down. If you had the money, would you do it? Uh, if I had the money, we'd think about doing it, absolutely. So there's also the issue of access and rights and 
eminent domain and mm -hmm. who owns what and what are his rights exactly? You're a lawyer. Yeah, so. he's he's got very sacred rights under the uh, American uh, law, American jurisprudence. There is nothing more important to American ju jurisprudence than real property rights. He's kept his taxes current. He has rights about that land and that's one of the major reasons behind this delay because he has the ability to say you can't come onto my property. For New York State Department of Transportation to go onto his property without his consent, they have to go through a court ordered process and every time you go into court it takes a long time. Now people may not understand it but think about it on the other foot. Right. If New York State came to you and said I want to enter onto your land and take down a tree or take down your garage, you'd want to have the legal right to fight them if you disagreed with them. Mr. Tartaro, although he has not kept up with his obligations to maintain that building, has rights to fight the state and or the city about uh, accessing onto his land. To some extent, he says, you know, part of the, you know, that the building, uh, 81, the building was there before 81, you got all of the the trucks coming by and you've got the exacerbation of some of the construction. He says, you know, the retrofitting of the building was affected by all of that. Now, okay, that's fine, but that doesn't help the rest of us who have to get detour around the city to get through there. And the truth of the matter that Mr. Tartaro has known for a long time that his building has been deteriorating. He has been warned that this was a distinct possibility. This and is what, through codes? Through codes um, and through the city's corporation counsel's office, uh, you know, pr previous to me becoming mayor. So this is not new to him. He was being told that he had to do something in order to prevent this from happening. He failed to do that. So can the state use eminent domain to enter his property, which is what he's concerned about. He said uh, that there was a letter that he received. Now, of course, you can't confirm that he got it, neither can I, because I didn't see the letter. He just called and said that he received a letter that indicated that there might have been some sort of indication that there could be that power used. Now, we don't know that for certain, but if that were true, would that be possible? I've, absolutely. I mean, and I'm not, I know of, I don't know if that um, has been stated by the DOT, uh, we haven't stated that on the city, but clearly the state has the right under eminent domain to go in there. It is posing a hazard to a interstate highway system.